Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2. Uh, and today I am, well, hopefully, showing you how to get to the moon and back um, safely uh, with a crude Kerbal mission. Um, and this is the rocket I'm going to use. Now, it's not dissimilar to the rocket that I used in the How to Get to Orbit video. Um, but uh, there are some differences, and I would definitely recommend that you watch that video if you haven't already. So let's have a look inside the fairing. Wow, that's weird and wobbly. Uh, we've got the same pod. Uh, we've got the same Terrier engine that we were using before, parachute, um, decoupler and stuff. All to the same, except we've added four landing legs. Um, these are the, just the base standard LT1 Wallaroo legs. However, I have adjusted the spring and down to the strength to maximum um, because I have found that the default auto suspension settings are a little bit spongy for my liking and can cause your rocket to kind of sag <laughs> when you land on the moon. Anyway, um, then we have the same kind of uh, middle stage. This is going to be our transfer stage with a swivel, LVT45, and then rather than going for some complicated arrangement of small parts, I've gone for the mainsail uh, down here, which is more than enough for our main stage. Uh, staging all very much the same as the rocket I used in the orbital video. We have our main stage. This will get us almost all the way to orbit by itself. We then we have a transfer stage to get to the moon and then we have our little vacuum stage at the top to land and return. Big dumb rocket, nothing complicated, no separate landers, Apollo style or anything like that. Uh, all, all pretty simple. So let's head to the launch pad. Um, if you watch my how to orbit video, um, then you should know kind of what I'm about to do. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole orbital procedure um, except to kind of just show off the fact we are in fact taking off. Um, why is what? You forget to fill it with fuel or something? That is, that looks, doesn't look right. I don't know what it's talking about. Anyway, let's get, let's get going. Oh, it does have fuel. Good. I've also noticed weird things with uh, the fuel cross feed for some reason. Um, anyway, you want to launch just like you did in my How to Get Into Orbit video. Uh, you want to make sure that you are pitching over. Try and try and use as little fuel as possible on the orbit side of things. Um, I'm not as good at launching these powerful things, so I tend to end up launching a little bit squiffy, you know, as to put it. Um, if that happens to you, Nothing, the moon's really easy to get to. You don't have to be perfect about it. Right now that we're above 10,000, I'm just going to switch immediately over to orbit mode. Um, and uh, I will see you there. Welcome back. As you can see, we're in orbit. We've got just a teeny tiny bit of fuel left in the, in the main stage. Uh, normally that runs out before you get into orbit, but I... Uh, I've done this a few times with this rocket, and um, sometimes it depends on your your launch. To be honest, uh, sometimes you can have a really good one, and you have a little bit of fuel left in that main stage. Sometimes you're onto the transfer stage. Um, it's a good thing to practice uh, and try and try and be as fuel efficient on your launch as possible because it really makes a difference. Anyway, the next thing to do is to do our transfer to the moon. I'm just going to drop down a quick save. Um, so we want to get to the moon. Um, the moon is on a, it's not an inclined orbit, so if you get into orbit around Kerbin 
and you do it pretty well and you've got a nice zero inclination orbit like this one um it makes it things much easier because everything's lined up but what you want to do take the moon and draw an imaginary line from the moon to the edge of Kerbin like that and then continue that imaginary line until you hit the orbit you're on and that's roughly where you want to make your maneuver plan and our maneuver plan is again going to be just like your circularization burn if you following my how to orbit video um click and drag the prograde marker and we're just going to click and drag it out and you're going to see our apoapsis going up and up and up and up and up and we want to drag that so that it is all the way out where the moon is And if you do it right, then you'll get something like this, where you get a funny little uh, little ping on the moon, and you get this symbol, and you get a, another periapsis over here. So this is the moon peri. It's really hard to actually see these, I find. So 132,000 meters is absolutely fine. You really want to try and get that as low as possible, uh, so that you've got a really nice intersect with the moon try not to actually get an intercept where you're hitting the moon that's not the best but this this would be absolutely fine so we just need to get set up for the maneuver so we're going to press uh, a line with maneuver <laughs> it's going to take the rocket quite a while because we're still attached to the lower stage but that's still 90 meters per second off delta v which is uh, nothing to sniff at our rocket will become a lot more controllable once we get rid of all this. Uh, this is quite a wasteful way. Normally you would want to drop this in real life. You would want to drop this stage uh, while you were suborbital. So getting rid of it during your circularization burn, for instance, uh, so that it falls back down and burns up so you don't have to deal with space junk. But uh, we can just explode it from uh, the tracking center, I think. So it's not going to be a huge problem. Uh, we'll just wait until we are aligned, and then we can start with the time warping. I always recommend getting aligned before you start time warping, even if it does mean doing a big old flip around like this. Um, simply because when you come out of time warp, uh, and then you realise the rocket's not aligned properly, uh, and then the rocket tries to align, and... Well, it can lead to bad things. <laughs> <laughs> so align before you go into time warp. It's just aligning onto the maneuver node. It'll be done in a minute. And there we go. You see, you can see here it's not a particularly circular orbit. Again, that doesn't matter hugely. Right, there we go. Okay, we're aligned. 13 minutes to go. We'll just time warp that away. <laughs> Back on to the day side. And 30 seconds to go. We'll go back into real time. Just make sure the rocket can reorient it itself if it needs to. Now you can see here this bit, we're going to be burning on stage one. All this is going to be on stage two. which is exactly what we have this this intermediate stage here for, is for doing this transfer burn. Two, one. Okay, so we'll drop our launch stage and go for moon encounter. See our apoapsis is climbing up and up and up. That's Absolutely fine. Then five, four, three, two, one, cut engine. And delete the maneuver, and then we're going to see how we did. Uh, not exactly right. So we're going to just increase our throttle just a little bit. Because we must have been close. Yeah, there we go. Cut. Okay, what 
what's my meter periaps? That's a little bit better than that. Uh, nah. 60. It's pretty good. So you can do it from the map. You can control everything from the map mode as well. In fact, a lot of players will probably end up doing that. Um, but that's it. We are on our way to the moon. Now, the next thing is to get is to do all this traveling, which would normally take a very long time indeed. However, we can just time warp it away. Now, you can click on this and time warp, but I've noticed that um, that can cause problems. So you want to click just before you reach the moon's sphere of influence and click time warp to a point and the game will automatically time warp you out to here. Now you can manually time warp, so we just want to wait until we pass from Kerbin's sphere of influence into the moon's sphere of influence. There we go. And the map mode will change so that now it shows our path relative to the moon, not to Kerbin itself, or Mun, if you prefer. Um, we can see here we've got a moon of periapsis of, what was it, 60,000 meters. That's okay, but uh, we might want to make it a little bit lower. So I'm going to point my rocket retrograde, and we're just going to burn just a tiny, tiny little bit, and this will bring our periapsis down just a smidge. We can keep an eye on it here. So we're just going to go just at the smallest throttle. And we just want to get it down to about 20,000 or so. Let's go for 25. There we go. 25. Now what we want to do is, well, if we just left ourselves like this, we would come around the moon and then we would slingshot ourselves out out of Kerbin's orbit completely, um, which is which is obviously bad. We want to land on the moon. We don't want to go off uh, and end up being orbiting the sun forever. So we want to click on our periapsis and create a maneuver plan. And this time we're going to click the retrograde marker and we're going to drag it. And we're just going to bring our orbit down until we see them start to swap positions. like that. Fine. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, I'm not going to subject you to watching me, even though I'm going to be time warping. Um, I will be back. Uh, drop, drop, drop down another quick save. Uh, I will be back once I'm ready to do the maneuver. Welcome back. So we are, as you can see, now flying over the surface of the moon. And we are 30 seconds away from doing our maneuver. Again, we want to keep an eye on these two numbers, we want them to be the same, 25,000 each. Our periapsis shouldn't change. Um, if that does start to change, then we're doing something wrong. Uh, but you can see we've still got plenty of fuel, 265 for this maneuver. We still have 700 left in the tank. So uh, this particular design is quite forgiving. If you didn't do a particularly good, good orbit, it will still work. Um, and it leaves you plenty of fuel to do landing and returning. All right, full throttle. Periapsis is coming, apoapsis, sorry, is coming right down. Then we're just gonna use fine throttle control. You can see our periapsis is starting to decline, so we're gonna cut, cut engine. 16,000 is still fine. Um, anything above 10 on the moon is usually okay. There's no super huge mountains or anything like that. So we are now in orbit around the moon. And now we have to start thinking about landing. Obviously we want to land on the lit side of the moon. Um, it's easiest, I find, there's a nice big flat area. Uh, this side is a little bit trickier, but we could try and land in this crater here. Uh, it doesn't really matter, you can try and land anywhere. Um, but that crater looks okay to me, which probably means we want to start breaking, uh, well, probably here. So I'm going to do this with a maneuver plan, first of all. And I'm just going to burn retrograde enough that we get a landing point 
at the edge, the far edge of the crater. You don't have to do it like this, um, to be honest. Uh, you can just decide to land anywhere you fancy. Um, <laughs> um, but there is something to point out with landing the moon as opposed to landing on Kerbin. There is no atmosphere. So you need to use fuel in order to land. There's no parachutes. Well, there are parachutes, but they won't work. <laughs> There's no aero braking. Um, you need to land using your rockets. And this is where things can get a little bit hairy and a little bit tricky. But as long as you stay calm, you stay gentle on the throttle, you will be okay. Now, it doesn't matter if I go past this maneuver, but I'd rather not. Right, there we go. So we are pointed retrograde to deorbit. Three, two, one. Full power and cut. Now we still have a little bit left in our uh, transfer stage. This is fine for now, but we do want to get rid of that at some point. So we can see now we're now heading over this crater. That's fine. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to set your uh, nav cluster, just switch it to surface mode and retrograde uh, and keep it like this until you're on the ground basically um, is my advice so we are going to wait until we're over the crater and then we're going to start doing a braking maneuver so we've deorbited and then it is time to brake because we have two components of our velocity that we need to get rid of so now we're over the crater we can kind of do what we want. So we are heading down and we want to touch down nice and gently. So we do need to worry about that velocity. But the main thing we need to get rid of is this sideways velocity. That is not good for us. So we, we're going to start a burn to slow ourselves down. And what you'll notice is the retrograde marker is going to creep up towards the top of the blue side of the nav ball. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm just going to go to full power and burn the rest of this, all of the rest of this tank off, first of all. There we go. Because we, we don't want this tank anyway, um, because it doesn't have the landing strut. So we're going to jettison it. thrust away from it a little bit and that will crash into the moon just fine and we're going to extend our gear before we forget <laughs> with G. So now if we look at our trajectory it's looking a little bit more flat and you can see that we are starting to move towards the top of the nav ball because whilst we haven't gotten rid of all of our sideways velocity we've gotten rid of most of it by doing that. So we're just going to wait a little bit until we're a bit closer to the ground, because you just want the moon's gravity to pull us down. And I would wait, I'd keep an eye on, <clears throat> it's, it's kind of a practice thing. You want to keep an eye on your ground altitude and your surface speed and the nav ball and the position of the nav ball. So you want a retrograde marker at the top of the nav ball and you don't want this going too high up. In fact, at the moment it is a little bit too high. So I'm going to burn just a little bit. And I'm not going to use full throttle. Be gentle. So we're going to try and get this down below 100 before we get to about 5,000 meters or so. Now, you can practice this a lot and you can get very, very efficient. Um, I have tons of fuel. This rocket is designed to have tons of fuel because I genuinely <laughs> I'm not super practiced at doing this manually um, but uh, it's fine so there, there we go 5,000 meters we're below 100 meters per second I'm gonna cut the engines and I'm gonna let this drift down a little bit more this is in ground mode by the way uh, it should by default in KSP be in ground mode just make sure that you are on ground and not C you can see as you can see <laughs> there is a difference 
Uh, ground is your radar altimeter. It actually tells you how far above the surface you are, um, which is kind of important. So now that we're going past 2,000 meters, uh, we want to start bleeding off a little bit more speed, so I'm going to increase my throttle. And basically what you want to be doing is by the time you get to zero meters, you want to have your surface speed nice and low. So we're going to bleed off a little bit more speed. I'm going to go full throttle for a little bit. That's enough of that. And a little bit more. We want to get our surface speed below it's about 12 meters per second that your uh, components will deal with, but we want to be a little bit lighter than that. However, be very careful you don't start going up, because going up is bad. <laughs> so you can just use just a little tiny bit of thrust, and you can see here we're just gaining 0.1 of a meter per second every now and then, just to keep us right. Let's see, if we turn the engine off, we start accelerating towards the ground. We're basically just falling at the moment. Um, and we're going to go down to well, about there, I think. And now we're just going to reduce this down a little bit more. Speed off. There we go. We're going to go in for a landing speed. 70 meters to go. And again, it's just keeping an eye on your altitude and your speed and making sure that you're going down <laughs> and not up. That's kind of perfect. We could just hopefully just glide that in. At this point, you might want to switch your stability control off as you can get a little bit of wobble. But just as you are about to hit the ground, switch your engines off. And then wait for the rocket to settle. Turn your stability control off. At this point as well is a good point. Is a good thing to do. And we'll drop down another quick save. So this is us. Now we are on the moon, and we can jump out. Be careful jumping out, by the way, because Kerbals ha do have mass. I wait, and um, that can be unfortunate. Come on, off we go. Right. It's not the most elegant way to get off the rocket, but okay. Ooh. Let's go over to that to that rock. Right, uh, get rid of that. Uh, he seems to be floating above the surface, but we won't worry about that too much. Uh, right, <laughs> let's hop on over to this rock that looks quite promising for a photo. Maybe it's an interesting rock. I doubt it. Uh, you can't take surface samples or anything, but you can do something pretty cool. Go to this flag. Oh, this flag. Way to give it away. <laughs> right, go to this rock, and we're going to plant flags. So right-click on your Kerbal, and put down the... Um, put down a description and a marker. And he will pull out a little, or she will pull out a little flag. Boom. Moon achieved. Very nice indeed. Good job, uh, Kerbal, whose name I forget. <laughs> you made it. Anyway, uh, I will see you uh, again once I'm back on board uh, so that we can um, go back to the uh, Kerbal Space Center and not stay on the moon forever. Welcome back. Uh, if you don't know how to get back on board your rocket, by the way, uh, if you uh, face the rocket uh, and jump using space bar, and then press R to get your jetpack out, and then press shift just to hover a little bit, and then grab. they'll grab on automatically nowadays, which is really nice. And then just press B to get back in. Now, we want to go back into orbit. So first of all, make sure that you switch from surface to orbit mode. Um, very important. And we're going to turn our SAS back on. Uh, and we're going to switch to... Whoa, no, 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 don't do that. 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 Shit. Ugh. 
Okay, don't actually flip the rocket over, you morons. <sighs> when did I last drop down a quick save? I don't think it was when I landed. Ah, uh, fuck. Well, uh, well, we might be able to recover from this. Hold on. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Um, let's see if we can recover it. Nope. That went poorly. Okay, let's reload the thing. <gasps> I did drop down a quick save before I did it. Woo! Uh, <laughs> yeah! Um, as you can see, uh, it is not without problems. So don't turn your SAS on, but do <laughs> press it into orbit mode. So all we want to do is we want to get off the ground before we start moving. I didn't realize the thing that reaction control wheels were that strong. Um, good to know. So we're just going to go up and then we're going to switch the SAS control on with T and then we're going to hit prograde. So we're just going to go up a little bit, T, and then prograde. Whoop. And then we're going to throttle right down. Because you really don't need a lot of thrust with this. And we want to get our apoapsis up to, well, at least 10,000. But realistically, um, anything, yeah, probably about 20. Uh, we're going to do this nice and slowly. Again, we want to do a nice efficient orbit here, if we can. Fuel efficient orbit. Nice gravity turn, uh, rather than just going straight up and then having to do a really uh, expensive maneuver to circularize. But this is just the same as launching off Kerbin, except you don't have to worry about the atmosphere, uh, which is very nice. You do have to worry about pressing the stability control too early and messing up. <laughs> which is bad. Anyway, uh, we're up to about 10,000 now, which is pretty good. Uh, just keep increasing that. Till I'm getting bored. <laughs> We've got so much fuel. Uh, increase till we get to about 20,000 or so. Um, same as you do on Kerbin, I'm going to do a circularization maneuver. Oh, wow, that's a shockingly bad orbit. Uh, this is quite normal. <laughs> um, to try and get a non-inclined orbit, but if you mess up, it doesn't really matter. Let's get on the maneuver node. Watching our periapsis, we just want to make sure that we are, in fact, in orbit to plan our next maneuver, which will be our turn maneuver. And there, that's fine. So, uh, return maneuvers, uh, there's a few ways of doing them. Um, you can actually do them from either side of the moon if you wish. Uh, however, I'm going to do it from this side. So looking at Kerbin, you want to do it from the Kerbin side. So we want to do it from about there. And we're just going to burn prograde. And you might be thinking, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> and yeah, I guess I am. But <coughs> you see now, we're leaving the moon's sphere of influence. And actually, I'm going to you can click a manoeuvre node and move it around. And we're going to move it just so that the periapsis is as low as possible. Okay, so you just move it around. And we're going to... Okay, we'll do it from there. And that'll get us out into Kerbin orbit and with a nice low periapsis. So, pretty simple manoeuvre. Um, we'll press manoeuvre control. Why? What? What's it saying? Why is it saying these things to me? 
don't know why it's got the red light. And that makes me a bit worried, but it's fine, I'm sure. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, four, 1. Right, 30 seconds to go. We are in the right place. Yep. Just don't know why it's lit up like that. This is normally a little countdown. And if it's red, it normally means stop. It's just all that's bothering me. Right. Five, four, three. Oh, there we go. It's reset. Two, one, go. Now, what we've done here is we are returning. So we're going to blast out of the moon sphere of influence. And then when we leave, we'll be back into Kerbin's sphere of influence, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just going to wait until we, until we, really? <laughs> Don't be annoying. Get there. Right. Time warp to a point. So what we're doing here is we're effectively using the moon to slow down our orbital velocity around Kerbin, which is exactly what we want to do because we want to get back to Kerbin, so we need to slow down. And there we go. Now that we are in orbit around Kerbin, we can see our Kerbin periapsis is 2,000 kilometers, which is not really what we want. So we're just going to swap to retrograde. We could wait until we go all the way around to here. It would be more fuel efficient, but it's fine from here. We're just going to burn a little bit, and we're going to bring the periapsis down until it is about 20,000 meters. Don't go too much, <laughs> because you will... This is a pretty uh, hot way of coming back, uh, but it is the simplest. If you wanted to, you could return to a low curve in orbit by doing another circularization burn and all the rest of it. But we're just going to aero break there. 22,000, it's fine. We're just going to aero break ourselves uh, once we're back. Um, now, I've shown that process before on the how to orbit video, uh, so I don't think I need to explain it too much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I will see you when I am starting re-entry. Uh, we started the re-entry process, so we just want to make sure that we... Hello? Detach from the exploding rocket. Because <laughs> we don't want that. And then, yep, yeah, just keep yourself um, orientated prograde. And you can see we're coming in a 1,000 meters per second more than we did and from low Kerbin orbit, be careful aero braking directly from a moon in return. If you go in too steep, you will just slam straight into the ground, parachute or no, because your parachute will just rip itself off. Don't do that. <laughs> and you can see here, yep, we're definitely hitting the ground. It's good. And you're going to see the G-forces on Jonesy here. Um, fluctuate but they shouldn't be too bad again we want a nice gentle re-entry there we go most of the speed is gone once we're subsonic we can deploy the parachute there we go always double check safe to deploy there we go And time warp your way back down to the surface. Parachute open. Switch to sea mode, because I think we are over the sea here. Oh, that opened really early. Um, 
I'll see you back when I'm on the <laughs> when we're back on the ground. Welcome back. Nearly there. Uh, <laughs> but as you can see, safe and sound over the water and splash down. Woo! Okay, uh, we shall recover the vessel. And what was my max G actually? Okay, that makes no sense. I don't think it was that. <laughs> that would kill him. <laughs> but absolutely fine. No problems at all. Um, and that is how you get to the moon. Um, let's go back to daytime. Um, ugh, too far. See what I mean with time warp? Especially the 10,000 stuff. There we go. Um, and higher. That's it. If you've got any questions... Uh, leave them down in the comments. I will try my best to answer them. Um, and let me know as well, what, what would you like to see beyond this? It's pretty much the main two things, uh, getting into orbit, getting to the moon, that people will try in KSP2 at the moment, um, with it in early access. Uh, do you want to see me doing Minmus? Uh, or I, I don't think... Uh, I can probably do a how-to on Minmus, which is basically the same as how to do the moon. But uh, are you interested in just seeing gameplay videos of me trying different missions and stuff like that? Um, do you want to see crude, uncrewed? What do you want to see? Let me know down in the comments and hopefully I'll see you again soon for some more Kerbal Space Program. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.